we're going to look at two classical algorithms for the minimum weight spanning tree problem. We have a connected graph G, and the edge weights are given by C. The problem is to find a spanning tree such that the sum of the weights on the edges in the tree is least possible. We first look at Prim's algorithm. It starts with setting T to be a subgraph of G that consists of a single node with no edges. The node can be any node in the graph. And then we enter into a loop. As long as T is not a spanning tree, we do the following. We find an edge E that is not in T with least possible cost so that when E is added to T, T remains a tree. And when this loop terminates, T will be a minimum weight spanning tree. Let's look at an example. Suppose this is our graph and the edge weights are the numbers in red. So let's start with this node here as our initial t. So according to the algorithm, we now need to find an edge having least possible cost so that adding the edge to what we have so far still gives a tree. So the edges that we can add so that we still have a tree are e1 and e2. If we add e3, e4, or e5, we have a subgraph that has at least two components. And we'll add e1 because it has lower cost. So now this is my tree. Next, we can add e2, e3, or e4. And in this case, e2 has lower cost, so we add e2. Now, we cannot add e3 because that will not give us a tree. We'll have a cycle. So we can add either e4 or e5. And e4 has lower cost, so we add e4. And so this is the end of the algorithm because we now have a spanning tree. Next, we look at Kruskal's algorithm. For this algorithm, we have to label the edges E1 up to Em so that the edge costs are in non-decreasing order. In other words, the cost of E1 is at most the cost of E2 and so on. We begin with the spanning subgraph T that consists of all the nodes in G with no edges. And we enter into a loop. We go through each edge E1 up to Em in that order. and we add EI to T if EI joins two different components of T. Here's the same example. The edges are already properly labeled. As you can see, E1 has cost less than E2, which has cost less than E3, which has cost less than E4, which has cost less than E5. So our initial T is the spanning subgraph containing all the nodes but none of the edges. Now we look at E1. E1 connects two components of this spanning subgraph, and so we add E1. And now we look at E2. Again, it connects two components of this spanning subgraph, so we add E2 to it. If we look at E3, it does not join two different components of the spanning subgraph we have so far, so we do not add E3. We now consider E4, and it joins two components of this spanning subgraph, so we add E4. And E5 does not join two different components of the spanning subgraph, so we do not add E5. And this is the end of the algorithm. As you can see, we ended up with the same spanning tree that we obtained using Prim's algorithm. But in general, this might not be the case. And sometimes there might be more than one choice for the edge that we can add. And so it is possible to have different minimum weight spanning trees.